it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for November 2024. So welcome to November. Of course, we made it through October. Thank goodness for that. And we are moving into a very transformative month. Now, I know we say that every month and every month we definitely change. We definitely evolve. We definitely transform. However, November kind of brings on a little bit more intensity in those particular areas because, of course, it's an 11 month and that 11 energy is a master builder, master creator, master manifester number. And being still in this Scorpio energy where change and transformation is the name of the game, you best believe that November is where we're going to start finally seeing the physical changes actually manifest, actually take on form. So I am going to recommend that you jump over to my website, that you download your November energy guide specifically tailored, designed for your zodiac sign. It's going to give you all the ins and outs on all of the energy shifts, where they're happening in your solar chart, and of course, help you stay ahead of the energy so that of course, we can roll with it instead of being dragged. So of course, we're coming out of October. October was a pretty, I'm going to say back and forth type of month. We entered into it under eclipse season. We entered into October under the influence of Libra season that of course was mass, was veiled, was confusion, was delusion due to those eclipses that of course we're just starting to move out of. We're wasting no time coming into November. Here on the 1st, we are having our new moon in Scorpio which officially closes the door on all the eclipse energy that we've been sitting in since early September. So we're being returned to normal moon programming and the new moon, the dark phase of the moon is no joke, especially in the Scorpio energy because the darkness is where something gets born. Okay, we are in a resurrection period here in Scorpio season. The new moon in Scorpio is going to now shift us out of the reflection, out of trying to connect the dots, out of the perspective, looking back, trying to understand the choices, the decisions that we made and where it is that that ended us up. And we're now going through the metamorphosis, the caterpillar to the butterfly. This new moon in Scorpio is going to be taking place at the earlier degrees of the Scorpio energy. So this is essentially a brand new cycle of change, of transformation. Again, wasting no time on the second, we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, movement out of the Scorpio energy, where we did a lot of detective work, a lot of piecing together, a lot of intuiting, a lot of intellectual concepts and conversations and circumstances that have already transpired. We went through the dark tunnel, so to speak, and now Mercury is moving into Sagittarius energy. Sagittarius pretty much acts as the light at the end of the dark tunnel, such as Scorpio energy. And with that new light comes a new understanding, comes a new truth, comes a new perspective, comes a new opportunity to shift our minds into a more optimistic, more confident type of inner dialogue and narrative. We're definitely going to be challenging our belief system. We're going to be bringing a certain closure to a, I'm going to call it long ingrained thought process or a belief system. Again, Sag energy, very rooted in spirituality and in intuition and in philosophical matters. We're starting to understand the deeper meaning, the purpose to some of the struggles in which we had to go through. So of course, Mercury and Sag energy definitely going to kind of have a brand new mood, brand new attitude when it comes to the way that we look at the world, when it comes to the way that we communicate our thoughts, our emotions, our ideas out to the world. We're definitely on a new quest for understanding, on a new quest for adventure, for exploration, where learning is definitely concerned. So again, we have another back-to-back event. On the third, Mars, the god of war, ruling over physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, moves out of the cancer energy that we've been kind of, you know, defensive in. We've been in preservation mode, so to speak, haven't really been taken I'm going to say a whole lot of action. Again, we were in defense mode. We were willing to fight, defend, protect what it is that we've already built and created, what it is that actually mattered and valued to us the most, but not a whole lot of initiating new forward movements as far as, you know, blazing a new path is concerned. 
Mars in this Leo energy. We're in the heart and soul of the Zodiac. We're bold, brave, and courageous to do what needs to be done. We're willing to take action if it means making our heart space happy. We have new creative energy, life force energy definitely coming through this physical form. Keep in mind, Mars still in his rulership here in Scorpio season. And so in this Leo energy, we're going to have a very short window of time short window of opportunity to take action, to make moves, to get us heart aligned with this new authentic version of self, with this new passion, this new desire. Why a short window of opportunity, you may ask? Well, because Mars is going to be going retrograde here in this Leo energy early December. So we're already needing to pay attention to the moves in which we're making. We already have to kind of be aware that we are going to have to retrace our steps once Mars goes retrograde. And this is going to carry us all the way in to 2025. So definitely a heart activation, definitely a rising up, if you will, in courage, in bravery to do the hard things that, of course, have been in our face for months now that we've been in a holding a pause pattern, not being able to take action upon. On the 11th, and again, numerology going to just be, you know, popping off here in the 11th month, you're going to have all these new age people talking about the portal, the portal, the portal. Very few actual portals, okay? Use your discernment. However, on 11.11, we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, moving Oda, the Sag energy, moving into Capricorn energy. So first of all, our heart space, again, we've had a major change of heart over the last couple of months, especially with Venus and Sag energy. We were a little bit more free. We were a little bit more independent. We were more open to experiment and explore what it is that we could do differently in order to create a realm of reality on our day-to-day -day level that looks good, that feels good, that promotes happiness and joy and long-term safety and security. Now, whether that is in your relationship dynamics, whether that's in your routines or your money matters, we have a different view of what it is that we need to do in order to bring this new version of self and the new realm and reality that this new version of self wants to build online. The Capricorn energy being an earth energy is going to help us anchor in these new wants, needs, and desires. It's going to help us think about our long-term goals, visions, and plans. And it's also going to have us very realistic in what needs to be done in order to clear out the past and actually make room for this new quest, this new adventure, these new ideas, these new people, places, and things that are going to offer us more security, more stability in the long term. So definite different mood, definite different attitude when it comes to love and money, when it comes to our overall happiness, joy, and pleasure. On the 15th, we have back-to-back -back energy shifts taking place, starting off with Saturn. Saturn, the Lord of Karma, will be going direct here in the Pisces energy. And of course, we've been retrograde, showing us where it is that, again, we have to boss up in our inner realm, where we have to have more discipline, more determination, if you will, to do the hard things. And in Pisces energy, we are totally demolishing and destroying the old false belief system, the old delusions, if you will, the old ways of going about bringing our dreams to life. Now, definite boundaries are needed. We need to have boundaries in order to protect ourselves. We also have to have boundaries and parameters and foundations and structures in order for us to build something new. Think of building a house. You have to have a floor plan. You actually have to have a plan, a vision in mind before you even break earth. And so we've been in this process of trying to kind of wash away old fears, old doubts, old insecurities, old karmic chapters. Again, Saturn is wrapping up a 30 year chapter here in this Pisces energy, but we haven't been able to do a whole lot about it. Now with Saturn going direct solely, but surely we are going to bring a new framework of the goals, visions, and dreams that we want to build online. We're going to bring online a new willpower and discipline and determination to actually do the hard things. And we just have to get a little bit more structured in our emotional realm. Again, we have to boss up, have control over our mental plane and our emotions so that our emotions and our mental plane aren't putting us in situations and circumstances that we don't want to be in. Again, we have to override the egoic programming. The second thing taking place on the 15th is the full moon in Taurus. 
And so this full moon in Taurus is going to immediately help us understand what in our physical realms we got to get rid of. We got to release. We got to let go of. Why? Because again, we have a new plan, a new vision, new floor plan online that we want to build. But of course, when you take a good look at the lot, we have trees to remove. We have to level the dirt out. We have to make sure that we are creating the proper type of foundation in order for this house to be built. And because the full moon in Taurus energy, yes, is about the ending, the closure, the removal, the release of a lot of the old. It is also about understanding where new levels of self-confidence, self-deserving, self-worth are coming online. Because again, you know, tying into Saturn's energy, if you don't believe that you deserve to be happy, if you don't believe that you deserve to be taken care of, if you don't believe that you deserve all of the things that you are dreaming of, then guess what? You don't. And in order for you to be able to manifest all of the things, all of the dreams, all of the visions that you're currently piecing together in your inner realm, you best believe you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you are worthy and deserving of all of the good things. So we're definitely going to see a major shift in our mood and our attitude, a major shift in our physical realm under this full moon in Taurus. On the 19th, Pluto, the great transformer, the ruler over the Scorpio season is handing over the power to Aquarius energy. Now we have been doing this back and forth, you know, cha cha cha, if you will, between Capricorn energy and Aquarius energy for the last couple of years, we didn't get very far in that Aquarius energy before, of course, Pluto went retrograde, crept back into that Capricorn energy, giving us a final hurrah to do a clean sweep in our physical realms, removing the type of structures and foundations that the old version of self had built in the old world that we are now moving away from. Pluto in this Aquarius energy will help anchor in the changes, the progress, the transformation, the power that we've been trying to kind of stand in, trying to restore, trying to get a hold of for the last couple of years. And of course, Pluto moving into this Aquarius energy is setting us up until 2044. This is going to be edging us into the age of Aquarius, edging us into having the power of return back to the people. And of course, this is going to be a huge bump up in the collective consciousness. Now, side note, how funny is it that Pluto, ruler over Scorpio season, is pretty much waiting to the last final days of Scorpio season where major change, major transformation and power is, of course, the major focus in order to hand over the power to Aquarius energy. This is mind blowing. This is divinely scripted for so many different reasons. And of course, it is setting us up for a major, major epiphany, major breakthrough in our perspective, in our understanding, in our information, and our knowledge. We're carrying that in to the 21st, when the sun, of course, is going to be moving out of Scorpio season and moving into Sagittarius. Of course, Sagittarius season is always welcomed coming out of Scorpio season. It is a mutable energy, which means that it's time to kind of spice things up, mix things up, try something new. Sag energy being a fire sign, it's time to initiate. Time to take action, time to have a new spark, new fire, new flame, reignited, reborn within us. And of course, that's what Scorpio season does is it sets us up for this rebirth. Now, Sag season is ruled over by Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth and expansion. So we have a lot of optimism. We have a huge ability to kind of see the forest past the trees to be very clear on what this future vision, this future goal actually looks like. And we're just going to be kind of running with it, exploring, experimenting with different topics and themes, especially with integrating some of the tough love life lessons that we've already learned, putting it into practice. We have on the 25th, Mercury going retrograde. And here we go. You know, it is the final retrograde where Mercury is concerned of 2024. It's happening at 22 degrees, which is a master builder, master creator, master manifester number of Sagittarius energy. Why I find that interesting and semi fascinating is because we started 2024 off with Mercury coming out of a retrograde and we went direct at 22 degrees in Sagittarius. So we're really taking a good look 
at our beliefs, at what we believe to be true, at what we need to believe to be true in order to actually break free of situations, circumstances that we know we've outgrown, that we know we need to put behind us. So in typical Mercury retrograde fashion, there's going to be a pause. There's going to be a reflection, revision needed. There's going to be, you know, old topics and themes that come up for review. We are going to be tested and challenged in many ways, especially where our intellect, our knowledge, our information is concerned. So again, I really recommend that you have those November energy guides specifically designed for your zodiac sign in front of you. Because of course, at the beginning of November, when we move into Mercury moving into Sagittarius energy, we're going to want to take notes to the topics, to the themes, to the concepts, to the conversations that are taking place, because this is likely going to be revisited when Mercury goes retrograde. So that is like November's energy shift summary. Of course, we're going to get into some depth and detail here as we start breaking each astro event down. But I am going to recommend that A, you get those energy guides in front of you and B, that you kick November off in the right way with the new moon in Scorpio. Download the moon guide, get yourself in alignment. This is a rebirth and a resurrection that only happens once every astrological cycle. And we have to take advantage of every opportunity to get ahead of the game.